Howdy y'all, uh, my name is Connor Wardle. Um, I'm gonna be making a kind of a video series of um, just various different uh, reptile care videos for the uh, kind of more underrated or um, I guess not, not as common um, species in the hobby uh, that I keep and that I enjoy keeping. Um, I'm gonna go over kind of their uh, native range, um, talk about their, uh, their diet in the wild, um, and then kind of transition towards uh, how I care for these species in captivity, um, and then just any other little interesting notes that I have, uh, if I have any, about the species uh, that we talk about. So anyway, I'm gonna try and make this kind of like a weekly video series, um, just something to uh, kind of uh, keep you guys engaged and uh, maybe teach you guys about a species you might not have heard, heard of before. So anyway, cool. Today we're gonna be talking about the Chihuahua Night Snake. This is my female here. Uh, she is what I would call a, um, a young adult animal. She's not quite the adult length that uh, adult night snakes can get, uh, which is uh, 12 to 16 inches. Um, but, I mean, she is kind of um, getting, getting there to that range. Uh, but, yeah, anyway. So, cool. Um, let's go ahead and talk about their native range. So, these guys, uh, of course, they're called Chihuahua night snakes. Uh, so they're native to the Chihuahuan Desert, which uh, encompasses West Texas, New Mexico, and uh, Northern Mexico. It actually goes pretty pretty far down into Mexico. Um, there are uh, some other cool species out there in the Chihuahuan Desert, like your gray banded king snakes, bear drat snakes, a um, bunch of cool uh, Mexico stuff, which I really enjoy, um, just stuff like that. But anyway, cool. So let's get back on track to the Chihuahuan night snake. Uh, these guys, uh, you can often fi often find them out in West Texas off on road cuts. Um, these guys are nocturnal, so they're going to be out at night, just like the gray banded kings. Uh, this would be some nice bycatch, um, which I would enjoy seeing out there. Um, these guys, similar to Alterna and all the other snakes out there uh, that are on road cuts, they're pretty good climbers. Um, I've got a universal rock background that uh, I enjoy seeing this guy climb up on. Uh, but what these guys do is they'll hang out in rock crevices during the day, come out at night and prey on uh, banded geckos. That's what they, uh, their main food source in the wild. I imagine they would eat some other smaller uh, hatchling um, little spiny lizards that are out there, um, like your, uh, yeah, just any, any of the uh, spiny lizards that are out there. I'm kind of uh, blanking on uh, some of the species that are out there, but anyway, cool. So yeah, banded geckos, um, I've heard that they will take rodents in captivity. Uh, that hasn't been the case for me, um, uh, but yeah, so as far as, I guess we'll transition into uh, captive care now. Um, as far as captive care of these guys, uh, I've got both of my females feeding on uh, frozen thawed uh, anoles um, and house geckos. So they'll take either, either of those, um, I'm trying to get them both up on uh, pinkies uh, eventually. Um, this girl is big enough for pinkies, um, she's just been a little bit... Uh, a little uh, tougher to switch over uh, than other snakes that I've kept in the past, um, but I've got a good uh, feeder and all source, so I don't I don't mind feeding uh, lizards. Um, but eventually, the end goal will be rodents. Uh, those rodent eating specimens can get a little bit larger uh, and girthier uh, than your traditional uh, or common uh, night snake that you'd find out in the field. Uh, I have heard uh, of a few examples of them taking pinkies or uh, even fuzzies, uh, some of the larger animals. And to do that, of course, you just uh, kind of skin a little uh, fence lizard and you can just wrap the, wrap the, the, the frozen thawed feeder in that, um, in that lizard skin and that'll be enough uh, scenting to um, go ahead and um, scent feed uh, your, your snake. Um, so they, are, they do have a little bit more specialized um, feeder source, which is why I'm pretty sure, uh, well, pretty sure that's the, the main reason why they are less common in the hobby compared to other uh, colubrids out in their range. Um, another cool thing about these guys is they are rear fanged. So rear fanged venomous, um, it's just a prey specific venom that they use to take down lizards um, and other um, things that they might come across in the wild. Um, I haven't been bit by these guys, so I'm not sure what exactly uh, their, their uh, venom does to people or to humans. Um, but I mean, they, they've never made an attempt to strike at me, so, um, there's really, really not been an issue for me with that. Um, 
<clears throat> yeah, so as far as captive care goes, um, like we said, feeding on frozen thawed anoles or house geckos, uh, I keep this one in a medium exoterra cube. Um, I've got a universal rock background on there. Uh, if you scroll through some of my posts, you'll see it, uh, my, this snake in particular out climbing around on that rock background, which I really enjoy. Um, the other the other female is uh, quite a bit smaller. Um, and that one I've just got in a hatchling rack for now until it gets some size, and then I'll uh, put it into a uh, another display tank. I really enjoy uh, coming home after work um, and turning on my lights and seeing these uh, this girl here just up on a rock wall just climbing around hunting, uh, which, which is a pretty neat thing to see uh, and exhibit that natural behavior there. Uh, as far as substrate goes, uh, you can keep them on, on Aspen um, just because I'm trying to go for a little bit more naturalistic um, set up with some of my displays, uh, I transitioned this girl from Aspen over to Sand, and I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, move her one more time to a more uh, like a 70-30 blend of topsoil and, and uh, sand, uh, just to kind of replicate what she gets in the wild. Uh, it's not necessary, uh, it's just something that is uh, kind of more uh, visually pleasing to me. Uh, yeah, um, I provide a, a large shallow water bowl in there. Uh, she gets in there occasionally to uh, get, get suck up some water before she sheds. Uh, but other than that, I really don't see her in the water bowl at all. Um, that being desert animals, they can go a long period of time without water. Uh, but it is important to give them uh, some sort of uh, water access in their enclosure. Uh, yeah. As far as temps go, I, I keep, I'm keeping it on a, a heat pad with a thermostat. Um, this girl here I keep at uh, just 82 degrees, similar to the rest of my colubrids. Uh, nothing fancy, no higher temperatures, being a West Texas desert animal, um, nothing nothing crazy. Um, and yeah, I'm just really enjoying these species. Um, eventually, I'd like to get a male and try and produce these guys. Um, I really enjoy keeping them. I think they're really easy captives. If you can go ahead and provide that uh, specialized diet of uh, frozen thawed anoles or house geckos, um, I would recommend them to anybody if you, if you can provide uh, that diet. Um, but yeah, I'm really enjoying keeping these guys, and I hope I taught you guys a little bit about these guys. And um, yeah, look forward to next week with uh, another care video. Hope you guys enjoy.